Now, learn the bass catching techniques of the Bassmaster Tournament Trail Pros coming next on The Bassmasters, right here on TNN Outdoors. Is it good? Hey. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, if this hadn't been my day today, <laughs> geez. Well, let's bet a dollar just for fun. Who can be the closest? Hey, about 6'3". Yes, yeah, six three, he said. All right, six three. I think you're right on the money. Well, I'm gonna give you one chance to change, so you are two ounces off. And I'll stay with six three. You still off. One chance to change. Six one. Six one. Stick with six one. I take six two. <laughs> and the weight is six pounds nine ounces. You owe me a dollar. Bassmasters, I'll make you a bet. A dollar against my cowboy hat that the next half hour you're going to learn something about tidal river bassing you'll be surprised about. Today, the Bassmasters Tournament Trail drops anchor at one of the world's best known rivers, the Potomac River. We're headed to Charles County, Maryland, just downstream from Washington, D.C., for the Kmart Bassmaster Maryland Top 100 Tournament. We fished the Potomac before, but like all tidal rivers, this is a changing situation. But not just the tide movement. Here's Bob Cobb from Bassmasters to tell you all about it. Ray, the Potomac River changes tidal conditions about every six hours, either from incoming or outgoing tides. But that's to be expected. What's puzzling these Bassmaster pros is a changing habitat. The millfoil grass beds are vanishing, and in some areas, they're gone. Normally, this area above the Woodrow Wilson Bridge and within sight of the Washington Monument would see 20 to 30 tournament boats fishing. But this morning, only a lone boat with Jay Yellis of Texas working an old rock jetty and submerged pilings and not the usual main river grass bed pattern. I didn't fish this spot too much in practice, but I fished all the grass beds over there, which normally are good, but the grass really isn't developed like normal up here in D.C. That there's no milfoil anymore, and it's just a mat of hydrilla. There's a few fish in the grass, but as you can see, I mean, there's, I think, one boat in that grass bed. Last year at this time, there was probably 20 or 25, so. Things have changed a lot. Hopefully, uh, due to the fact that the grass beds are deteriorating, there might be more fish on this spot this year. That's kind of what I'd, I'd like to see. Well, Ray, that sets the stage for this Kmart Maryland Top 100 Pro-Am Tournament. The anglers face a lot of adjustments, but in tidal water fishing, that's to be expected. Give these Bassmaster Pros three days on any waterway, and we'll bet they'll figure out the best bass catching pattern. I'm Ray Scott. Stay tuned. The Bassmasters are coming right back. The nation's river, the Potomac, downstream from Washington, D.C., is no stranger to the pros on the Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Over the past seasons, they've learned to figure and fashion patterns for catching largemouth bass in these tidal waters. What is different for the 1997-98 Bass Angler Sportsman Society's tournament season is the namesake sponsorship for the Top 100 Pro-Am Tour. Now, it's officially the Kmart Bassmaster Top 100 Circuit, and with it, an increase in the first place purse to $75,000, as well as a balloon to $316,700 in the overall payout. All total, the 20 BASS events on this season's tour will top the $5 million mark in cash and awards a high-water mark in professional bass fishing since Ray Scott put the idea into motion 30 years ago in June 1967. One angler who has repeatedly made it pay is Roland Martin. 
nine-time Bass Angler of the Year with 18 BASS wins to his credit. And on the Potomac River, where he learned to fish 40 years ago, Roland's on to something big, a five bass limit and 19 pounds, six ounces. But 98 pros check in limits on day one. Two-time Angler of the Year, Kevin Van Dam is right in the hunt. 18 pounds, 13 ounces. The leaderboard tells the story of this amazing fishery. Brent Chapman, third, with 18 pounds, eight ounces, followed by Gary Alverson and Guy Aker in fifth. Jimmy Houston, with 17 pounds, five ounces, ranks sixth, followed by David Fritz with 17-1. It takes better than a three-pound average to make the top 10. Can you believe it? But what's all the flack about the lack of grass? Downriver, there are areas with grass and bass, such as this Millfoil Flat in Akea Creek, where Oklahoma's Jimmy Houston and North Carolina pro Guy Aker are fishing. Both limited quickly on three-pound-plus bass here yesterday. But more boats and fishing pressure change the day two story. There'll be no 17-pound stringers caught here today, though. Yeah, buddy. Singing and catching. Listen, don't, that don't help any. I think he just like the other little bitty ones I got. Guy Aker explains the bass concentration here. And out there, the wind would, had really stirred the mud up all on the outside of the big river. All them fishes moved in here in this grass where a lot of the bait fish are. And all I'm doing is running a shallow running, shallow running crank bait right over top of this grass. And uh, changing colors, the mud is pushed in right out here to the in front of us. Out there, I'm using a chartreuse bait. And back in here, I'm using, in this clear water, I'm using a, a blue bait. But uh, it's just a place that you look for something like this. When the river really gets messed up, really gets muddy, <clears throat> these fish will hunt fresher, cleaner water. Tournament leader Roland Martin is fishing further south in a large feeder creek in western Charles County. There's a reason he picked Nanjamoy Creek. One of, one of the neat things about this particular creek is it's a, it's a very big major creek and for three or four miles it has plenty of deep water. It has a lot of bends that have 20 and 25 feet of water in them and it's consequently a wintering place for the bass. They, they pour in out, out of the shallower Potomac uh, flats and they spend the winter here. Um, Consequently, it's a, it's a good spring spot as well. But the colder it gets in the fall, of course, they keep packing in here, coming off the Potomac. His bigger bass yesterday came on this one half ounce Blue Fox jig with a pork chunk trailer. Roland's got a little trick with it. One thing you do do with the jig that I do with the jig on these limbs, when I get on a good limb where well, I think there's a fish, I jig it up and down in the same spot. But then mainly I swim it along. It's about like a worm. It's about like a worm. Nice two and a half pounder if I can get him in. I think he's hooked pretty good. Yeah, there we go. Now yesterday, I caught a limit of fish on a spinnerbait, ended up culling them all, caught a limit of fish on a worm, ended up culling them all, and the five or six fish I caught on the jig were all the ones that I weighed in. So I'm not a real rocket scientist. I can't really figure out too much, but I know that that's a good enough pattern for me. That is the deal. If it's a jig bite, that's what I'm going to stay with. That's small. Kind of small. Kind of small. Two and a half, maybe almost three. In fishing tidal waters, you hear a lot about how current positions bass on cover or structure. Here's an example, a large laydown tree and how Roland Martin approaches it. On this particular tree, there's a current coming in on this side. So all these current faces that, that presents itself ought to be the target for where the fish are. With every change of tide, there's a chance that some bigger fish will move in. Now here's a good shady, spot right on the current edge. Come on. 
middle one. Ah, it's just a small one. That's just the limit. But that's only 13 pounds. I don't have very much on There are more tips and tactics from the Kmart Bassmaster Maryland Top 100 coming up. But now it's time for Bass Mail, where you viewers ask the pros for how-to answers. Mike Houghton of Sheffield, Pennsylvania writes, what color spinner bait is best for fishing in muddy water and why? Well, here's two-time angler of the year, Kevin Van Dam with the answer. Hey Mike, good question. One of my favorite things to do is throw a spinner bait in muddy water. And the reason is, is because the muddy water is going to position the fish close to the cover and it's going to move them shallow, which is the perfect zone to fish a spinner bait. Now visibility is very important. I basically use a couple of different colors. I like chartreuse and a pearl white because those are going to be very visible. Now sometimes if it's sun shining and I'm fishing real shallow, I like to use metallic blades. But if it's really, really muddy, I'll just go right with painted blades, either all chartreuse or all white. I like to add a plastic trailer to it, adds a little extra vibration to it. And I always fish a trailer hook on the spinner bait, regardless of how much cover I'm fishing. But those colors are always going to work for you. If you have a question for the Bassmaster Tournament Trail Pros, write Bass Mail. 8600 Coppertown Lane, Box 404, Dallas, Texas, 75243. We may select your question to answer on the air. He needs 18 pounds to take the lead, folks. Look out for a new leader, BK team. 20 pounds, 14 ounces. Ho! Woo! Randy Blockett from out of no place in the first place. Yesterday, the Joplin, Missouri Pro with 14 pounds, nine ounces, didn't even scratch the leaderboard. But fortunes can change rapidly, as with the ebb and flow of the Potomac's tide. Well, I think the big key is you gotta be in your water during uh, you know, the last two hours of uh, outgoing tide and the first two hours of incoming tide, your best water that you're fishing. And that seems to be the key to catching the bigger fish. So I've just tried to stay in my best areas during that time instead of running around throughout biting. Randy Blockett leaps from 23rd place to atop the leaderboard with a two-day total of 35 pounds, seven ounces. Kevin Van Dam holds tight to second with 34 pounds, seven ounces. The, the real key in, in tidal water is just really understanding what the fish do as the, as the tide moves. It doesn't really matter to me if it's high or low, but I, just, I like the water to be moving because the current is always going to position the fish. They're always going to wait by something uh, when, the, when the water's moving to, to bring some shad or, or some bait fish and per, yellow perch or some white perch by them to, to eat. And, and so every place that I fish, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of that. Every target that I throw at, I want to throw uh, so that the bait swings across the current in front of the fish. David Fritz climbs into third, followed by yesterday's leader, Roland Martin, and Robert Graham in fifth. Day three, the final round of the Kmart Bassmaster Maryland Top 100. Bright, sunny conditions, but low slack tide. There's just one pound separating the tournament leaders who this morning are fishing literally within a cast of each other. Only a five minute run from the Smallwood Park launch site, Randy Blocken and Kevin Van Dam are both working a half mile stretch of shallow shoreline in Occoquan Bay. There's a variety of cover on this shoreline. Lay down logs, uprooted trees, rocks and lily pads. As Randy Blockett explains, casting technique is a key. The, the bigger fish that I've caught have come on the pieces of cover that are out away from the bank that, you know, may be connected to the visible stuff. But um, the, the whole key on this type of an area is I'm really having to be real accurate of the angles that I'm making on the cast because it seems like I can pull up to one of these pieces of cover and make maybe 10 or 15 casts it before the fish will strike you know, just before you can get to the right angle on it. And um, they're really feeding according to the tide. It seems like they're really either totally non-aggressive or really active according to the tide conditions. A lot of people have the theory that when the tide's high, the fish move closer to the bank. And I, don't, I haven't found that true at all. I think that's just something that a lot of people try to explain, that, you know, make it easy. But to me, it's like the bigger fish stay out on the deeper outside stuff, even on a high tide. And that's one of the things I think that helped me yesterday because most all the, the bigger fish that I caught came when the tide was, you know, fairly high out on, away from the bank in some deeper water. Kevin Van Dam shared a difference of opinion with our Bassmaster's camera on bass behavior on high tides. 
with a real high tide like we had today that normally don't have any water on them, banks that are normally dry, you know, got an extra foot of water or so on them. And that's really the kind of the areas I concentrated on, these places that don't even normally have water on them or any fish. And those fish really like to go up and move up into that, that shallow cover when the water comes up like that. And that's what I was targeting, extremely shallow water. But that was yesterday. Tides change. Early this morning, the tide is extremely low, lower than I've ever seen it. And uh, most of the, the fish that I've been catching in this area have been coming up off the bank cover. But there's almost no water on it at all. There's maybe six inches. There's a few isolated pieces of wood out here a little further. And that's where the fish you know, tend to move out to. They go out to that little bit deeper water first thing. As the tide moves back in, they'll move in real tight into that, that bank cover, all those stumps and stuff. But, Right now, we're just trying to pick off a few of these isolated fish, and later on, the fishing should get a lot better. As the tide turns to incoming, Kevin Van Dam moves with it to the shoreline cover. Kevin's fishing a tandem blade spinnerbait, a 3 8 ounce Strike King Pro model with Colorado-type blades. The blade shape is important in order to slow roll the lure over the limbs. The larger blades, 20-pound test Trilene XT line, and the high rod tip figure in the slow retrieve presentation. Kevin's crawling the spinnerbait over the cover. this particular bank right here is, is working the tide just right and the sunshine because the sunshine puts the fish tight to the cover and then the tide positions them on the uh, upstream side of the, of the logs and stuff. They'll lay right underneath them and they'll face with their head out. So you just put your bait and just slow roll that spinnerbait right down those logs and around the edges of those stumps and any little shady spot that's facing into the current and you're gonna catch those fish. Randy Blockett's making a game of it, scoring on a mega bass crankbait. But in this final round of the Kmart Bassmaster Maryland Top 100, it's Kevin Van Dam who's putting on a fashion clinic. For sure, Kevin's good, but being a little lucky to get bass out of the stuff he's fishing sure helps. Final weigh-in is coming up. Kevin Van Dam of Kalamazoo, Michigan. All right. All right. He's got to have 12 pounds and 7 ounces to take the lead. 12-6. Put him on. He made it, people. 16 pounds. 14 ounces, boom! Congratulations! Hey, Ray. Hold him up, baby. Hold him up. Well, it's going into the record book. Kevin Van Dam, the champion of the first Kmart-sponsored Bassmaster Top 100, a prize worth $75,000. He did it with 15 bass and 51 pounds, 5 ounces. The runner-up, Randy Blockett, with 47 pounds, 8 ounces, nets $34,000. Rick Lilligard claims third with 46 pounds, 13 ounces, followed by Guy Aker, Denny Brower, and Roland Martin in sixth place. In the amateur division, Michael Grant of Waldorf, Maryland, with 35 pounds, 8 ounces, wins a $22,000 Ranger Bass Rig, powered by an OMC outboard. Right now, it's time for the Pro's Pointer, the champion's winning tip, brought to you by Wrangler Rugged Wear, geared for the outdoors. 
Anytime you're fishing a place like the Potomac River that has a lot of stained water, I like to use a spinnerbait with Colorado blades. That stained water makes the fish hold tight to the cover and it keeps them shallower. So I use this 3 8 ounce Strike King Pro Model Premier bait. It's got Colorado blades and I slow rolled it. I fished it real slow around logs and things. And with the tide running, it, it presents current and it washes over these logs and the fish are always facing upstream. So I like to position the, ba uh, the bait so it runs straight down those logs and hit the bass right in the nose. One of the real important things though was the addition of a trailer hook to it. And what I like to do is I like to use this little Mustad short shank trailer hook. And I'll just slide it right on the hook. And instead of using a plastic keeper, I just twist the eyelet over a little bit and then crimp it down so it can't uh, come off, so it can't slide off the barb. And then it's always free to move. So if I let the, the spinner bait flutter down on the other side of a log like this, that trailer hook is always right there. And this little shorter trailer hook hangs up a lot less than those longer hooks. Be sure to be on board with the Bassmasters next week. We're headed to Lake Champlain for the Kmart Bassmaster Vermont Top 100 Tournament. This huge 300,000 acre natural lake is perhaps the last great untapped fishery in the country. We'll show you why. The bass catching action is nonstop. For the Bassmasters, I'm Ray Scott. See you all next.